Welcome everyone and Merry Christmas. Come on in folks, we are about ready to start. There's a lot of people greeting each other. It's good to see you. Welcome to the house of the Lord. As we begin today, we're going to light the Advent wreath. Hope is the theme of the day, it is the first Advent. And uh, Kyle and Catherine Shram will come and read scripture and light the first Advent of Canada. Good morning. All righty. The Lord God of Israel said, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. A voice of one calling in the desert prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all mankind together will see it. For the month of the Lord has spoken, the sovereign Lord comes with power and his arms rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lamb in his arms and carries them close to his heart. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together. Angels we have heard on high. Angels we have heard.
Things were made without him. Nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. It shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, his name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And though he was in the world, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, had the right to become children of God, to be born out of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen the glory, the glory of the one and only Son, through the Father, full of grace and truth.
The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David, a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. Don't you just love babies? I do. They bring so much joy to our lives, at least to my life. And when I hold them, I look into their eyes and wonder what they're going to be when they grow up or what they're going to do. Well, today's service is all about a baby, a special one. So listen in and listen to all of the things that this baby is going to do as he grows. Joseph, 
who is a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings this might be. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. Lord God will give him his throne of his father David. He will rule over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who is said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Now let's listen in on the other side of the story. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because her husband Joseph was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly, but after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. For she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. This all took place to fulfill what the Lord said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Emmanuel, which means God with us. At once Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as a wife, but did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and gave him the name Jesus. May I invite you to stand as we sing together? Jesus.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that should be taken census over the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, it came time for the baby to be born. And so she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone all around them, but they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heavens, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. 
once the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us all about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. Once they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi came from the east and asked, Where is the one who has been born, King of Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all, Jew and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born, in Bethlehem in Judea, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem and Judah, are by no means loose among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him.
After they had saw the star, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thank you again, boys and girls, for doing this a second time. Did they do a great job? Okay, I'm going to talk a few more minutes, and then you can do your last song. All right, then you'll be done. All right. Um, so normally, when you see a Christmas message, it ends with the rice men returning to their country by another route. But that's not where this true account ends. So in the book of Matthew, it tells us, when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So I don't know if you grasped the last couple of words that I read, but it says, kill him. This should tell us what kind of man we're dealing with. Pure evil. And I wonder how Joseph felt. He was given the responsibility of being Jesus' earthly father. 
And then he hears that someone is out to kill his child, the son of God. But the prophecy says that the king of the Jews would come and reign over his people. Herod took that as a threat. So when the wise men didn't return, the Bible tells us that Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi. He was furious. He gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. I don't know how many times you guys listen to this or read this, but I want you to hear it. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel reaping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. And I want you to think about that for a moment. It's something that we don't normally talk about at Christmas time, um, but I want you to try to imagine what these mothers were feeling as their innocent children's lives were ended prematurely. You know, we think about Herod and his actions as horrible, and they were absolutely horrible. But I want us to think about his motive. Herod was afraid. He was comfortable in his lifestyle. And Jesus was a hindrance to the way that Herod wanted to live his life. So he would do anything that he could to get rid of Herod so that he could keep his authority. And so because he was afraid, he just felt like he needed to do anything in his power to keep control. So it's human nature to, it's human nature to be afraid. But there's a difference between us being afraid and choosing to try to take things um, into our own strength and choosing to trust in the Lord. And there's a vast difference between the way that Herod chose to respond when he was afraid and the way that Jesus or the way that Joseph and Mary chose to. So now let's look back at the Christmas story as a whole. I think that sometimes people look at the Christmas story and they think it's just a sweet, happy story. I mean, after all, it is tradition for the children to be the ones who put on the production. But it, in reality, the people in the Christmas story, they faced real fear. Their lives were about to change in unexpected ways, and it was scary, and it was uncomfortable. But they chose to accept that God had a different plan for their lives, and they trusted him. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Um, the definition of fear is an emotion caused by the belief that something or someone poses a threat to us. And I'm sure that we can all recall a time in our lives when we felt afraid. And if we really think about that, think about what fear does to us. Just the way that we, you know, we can't think clearly. Sometimes we don't react and do the things that we're supposed to do. The Bible says, do not be afraid 365 times. You guys, fear is real. I wouldn't say that. But we cannot let fear keep us from fulfilling what God has called us to do. So how do we fix it? Being in his word and then trusting his word to us in this area strengthens us to overcome fear. And it keeps us moving forward, even if it's just little by little. We know that Mary and Joseph were afraid because the angel told them not to be. And we also know that Joseph's plan was to divorce Mary quietly. But instead, he chose to trust the Lord and keep his commitment to Mary. And then if we think about Mary, her life was about to train, change drastically. And any woman who was in the situation that Mary was in would have been afraid. Mary could have said, you know what, this is not the right timing for me to have a baby. But she didn't. She chose to put her life in the hands of God. And I know that sometimes we look at the Bible and we think, well, things were different back then. Those were different people, different times. You know, the world was different back then. I hear so many people say, the world, was so much, the world is so much worse now than it was back then. But if you really pay attention to this true account, the world was very similar to the world in which we live today. Um, in the story of Jesus' birth, hope was born, but it still comes in the midst of scandal and fear. God was born into straw. He was born into poor circumstances, in a world of fear and violence, yet overcame it with his love. 
So Christmas should remind us that though life can be difficult and uncertain, God is with us. And we can take comfort that God has a plan and a purpose for our lives, even in the midst of our struggle, just like he did with Joseph and Mary. And if we follow Jesus with a committed heart like they did, God can use us to fulfill his story. We just need to say, we just need to say, I'm the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. So Herod, he took matters into his own hands. He was the Lord of his life. If you notice, though, no matter how much control Herod thought that he had, God's plan was still going to happen regardless. Now, bad things still happen because we have free will, and Herod chose to do what he wanted to do, but God's plan still took place. Jesus lived, and he fulfilled what he was not on earth to do. So, guys, fear can be intense, but there's no one I would rather have on my side than the Lord when I'm afraid or going through the unimaginable. So let's not miss the opportunity to allow him into our lives because we're afraid or we consider him a threat to the plans that we have for ourselves. What I want you to understand today is the God who we're talking about, the God of the Bible, who is faithful and who is available to Mary and Joseph, he's living and active and he wants to be a part of your life. Trust me, I know. <laughs> he, um, he's a part of my life and I can tell you that his ways are better. They're always better. And I want you to know that the same God who was available back then is the same God who's available to us today. He hasn't changed. So listen to these verses. Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3, 6. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. Psalm 102, 27 says, But you remain the same, and your years will never end. James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change.
He is a very present help in our times of trouble and in loss. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth may change, Though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though it may feel like the ground from beneath our feet gets ripped out from underneath of us, the waters roar and they foam, the mountains quake at the, the pride, the swelling pride of fear. There are many things that can come against us. But the, the psalmist says, be still and know that I am the Lord, your God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth, for I am the Lord of hosts. I am the God who is always with you. When, when he says, I am the Lord of hosts, he says, in, in English, the way to understand that is, I am the Lord of heaven's armies. And there is nothing that can come against you without having to go through me. <laughs> he is a firm foundation. Though it may feel like the ground from beneath your feet can get ripped out from underneath of you, you don't have to fear and the kids have reminded us today that he is the rock of ages. In the age in which Jesus was born into the earth, and this age too, he is still the solid rock. <laughs> he is still a firm foundation. And goodness, the Lord wants someone to hear this today that you have been crying out and you need to be reminded that he has heard your prayer. He has heard your cry. Do not fear and do not be discouraged. He has heard you. It's who he is. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the alpha and the Omega. He is the A to Z and everything in between. He is the Lord of everything, and He is the soon coming King. Amen? There's something about the name Jesus, and there's something about that baby who was born 2,000 years ago. Whew. Amen? Amen. I'm not supposed to preach today, so I'm going to stop before I start. What I do want to do is recognize the truth that the kids preach to us today, the best sermon I've heard at Grace Point in the last three months. <laughs> so can we thank the kids? Yeah. <laughs> we love you guys I'm just so proud of you and I know that Jesus is so proud of you you've done a lot of singing today are your voices tired no no oh, goodness listen I just got done talking to all of your parents at the exact same time and they all said you can have as much ice cream and candy and just that you want. It's all you can eat dessert today. <laughs> uh, can I give you a better blessing than the sweets? Listen, you've done a lot of singing today. In Zephaniah 317, it says, The Lord our God is a mighty warrior who is always with us. One of his names is Emmanuel. You guys taught us that today, that God is with us. And at the end of Zephaniah 317, it says of this mighty warrior that he will rejoice over you with singing and shouts of joy. Did you know that God is singing a song over you? Yeah? 
Well, I'm, my prayer is that you get to hear God's singing voice today because he's heard yours. Amen? Yay. Amen. Yay. Now, I want to recognize all of our volunteers, all of our adults who were a part um, uh, of weeks and weeks and months of hard work. W would you just stand so we can thank you, please? <laughs> yeah. Thank you to all those. I want to thank Pastor Edgar and the audio crew and the lights crew. They did a great job. Let's say thank you to them. And uh, Miss Rachel with the preschool group. Uh, oof, that was so good, so cute. We thank you. And last but not least, can we just honor our children's uh, director, Mrs. Kathy? Would you please stand up? Aren't we so thankful for her leadership? Yay! Uh, amen. It's been such a good day in the Lord's house. I just want to leave you with um, this prayer. I want to share with you a prayer that I've been praying for Grace Point in the season. And, and the prayer has been very specific, but it's been very simple. Lord, w would the story of Jesus' birth have proper place in our hearts during this season? And, and why I've been praying that is that we not get distracted or lost in a very busy time that we not be distracted by gifts and presents and everything, but the story of Jesus' birth really has proper place in everything that we do. And then, would the story of Jesus have, have proper place in our conversations with others? You know, the shepherds, they couldn't wait to go and tell everyone what they had heard and what they had witnessed. And when they told everyone, it says that everyone who heard wondered at what it was that the shepherds were saying. When they heard about Jesus, it caused them to wonder. And I've just been praying that as you go and tell people about the birth of Jesus, it caused them to wonder and to be excited and to be hopeful. Amen? That should be the way we present the Christmas story. Amen? Amen. Okay. I love you, Grace Point. Can I just pray for you as we go? Father in heaven, I just want to bless the congregation that, Lord, the story of your son Jesus, his coming to the earth, may it really have proper place in our lives. That we don't just add it as a compartment to our lives, but, Lord, it become the thing that permeates every conversation, every thought. In this season, it's that Jesus came to the earth for us. Lord, would you save us? Would you deliver us as the one who is with us? Lord, I pray a blessing on those who need to know that they have been heard, that the cries of their heart have reached your ears, and that, Lord, you are their firm foundation. As we go, would your face shine on us and would your spirit rest on us? And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Grace Point, you're dismissed. Go in the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give it up for the kids one more time. Yeah.